good afternoon everyone. Uh, we are glad na kayo po ay maaga mag-join in sa ating uh, Google Meet. And of course, we are live uh, via YouTube. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po. And for those po na uh, co-teachers or classmates, na yung mga estudyante natin dito, classmates, and um, yung mga magulang din, no? we are um, uh, already 76 here in our Google Meet. And again, we would love, uh, we would like to thank you for uh, joining in. Maraming maraming salamat po for investing your time with us. Uh, kanina umaga, we uh, just had uh, the first half of our uh, webinar. And uh, our speakers share with uh, cybersecurity and the cyber threat landscape. Also, setting up a secured environment. This afternoon, we will focus on parenting in digital age. Kaya, uh, again, for, for the students who are watching in, uh, who are watching and joining in, uh, let's invite our parents. This is a very uh, important topic, lalo na sa, sa panahon natin ngayon, no? uh, this parenting in digital age. First things first. Why Parenting in Digital Age or Why Digital Parenting Webinar? Let's have our objectives. As part of the implementation of the fourth pillar of the National Cybersecurity Plan 2022 or 2022, which is the protection of each individual, this webinar aims to equip parents on the use of internet and communications technology, to bridge the gap between the parent and child relationship and to engage children with motor activities. Nakakatuwa po because as uh, we take a look at the objectives, uh, ito po ay partnership of the uh, government agency which is uh, the DICT, of course different academes no? uh, from different provinces and different municipalities Hindi lamang sa Quezon province, but the entire Philippines. Kanina umaga, ang dami nating uh, kasama. Meron tayo from Pampanga. We also have from uh, Sorsogon. We also have from Bulacan, Laguna, even Zamboanga. Uh, that is why this is a great avenue for us to be equipped and uh, to be informed. Sabi nga sa isang linya, damang ang may alam. Even in the cyber world or the cyber community. Guidelines and reminders first. This webinar is recorded for documentation purposes and will be posted on YouTube. Please pause ating participants. Uh, kindly turn off your microphone and camera. This is for, uh, to avoid distractions and uh, unnecessary noise. Please do not share your screen or do any annotations. Uh, observe proper decorum and an etiquette. Ayan, alam na alam na ito ng ating mga uh, estudyante. And of course, a little later, uh, after the discussion of our speaker, we'll be having Q&A. And uh, nandito na sa ating chat box, no? Ang ating uh, link or, yeah, ang link para sa uh, Q&A. Or for you na maipahatid kung ano yung mga tanong ninyo. Of course, certificates will be provided to those who have attended the full duration of webinar, answer the post-evaluation form, and pass the quiz. Ayan, kaya talagang tututok tayo sa, uh, sa discussion. Pass the quiz with at least 70%. That is set 7 over 10 points. Also, please input a valid and active email address when filling out the post-evaluation form. Cut of time is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Of course, this is for you to receive your certificate. And of course, replay uh, of this uh, webinar is made available. You will just visit CyberSec LC2 YouTube channel. All right. As I said earlier, this is an initiative of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Uh, let's just read the mandate. The Department of Information and Communications Technology shall be the primary policy, planning, coordinating, implementing, and administrative entity of the executive branch of the government that will plan, develop, and promote the National ICT Development Agenda. That is RA10844. And 
This is in partnership with the MSEUF CCMS, College of Computing and Multimedia Studies. CCMS is one of the academic departments of MSEUF that caters in demand IT courses that are beyond the standards. It continues to fulfill its vision to be a center of excellence, providing opportunities to the fellow Kazonians and people from neighboring places to experience the quality IT education that for many can only be achieved in Manila. We have the next. And of course, as you can see on screen, MSEUF CCMS is a shared center of development in IT education. Its BSCS and BSIP programs are PACOCOA Level 3 accredited. CCMS is also an official partner of DICT and an institutional member of Philippine Society of IT Educators. CCMS is also a Cisco Networking Academy, AAP member, Microsoft Academy, Oracle Academy, SAP Business One Academy, Acer Academy, and Huawei ICT Academy. CCMS is the only HEIs in the Kazan offering specialized courses leading to specific technical skills. Students at CCMS have the option to choose from the following specializations of various programs. Also, MSEUF is the only institution in Kazon offering IT graduate programs and one of the few institutions in the country offering BSIT under ETIAP, where professionals without college degrees can obtain their degree in just one year. This is a very good offer, our ETIAP. And for more updates, like, follow, and share our MSEUF CCMS FB page. We'll be hearing an opening remarks from Engineer Reynaldo TC, the Director of Luzon Regional Cluster 2 DICT. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice seeing Namaraya Pala interested to join today's digital parenting seminar. I presume na lahat tayo dito ay parents, but it doesn't stop yung mga single naman dyan to join us. Anyway, the pandemic brought the worst and the best part in our lives. It obviously naman na yung worst is the effect of COVID to our health. But the best part of pandemic, especially sa mother, is the inclusion family. Dahil lahat nasa bahay. Nakauso na ngayon yung work from home sa mga working parents, Kaya almost 24 hours magkakasama ang family. This gives the parents a chance to be close with their children and a great opportunity to spend quality time with their family. Another advantage that the pandemic also brought us is na highlight the importance ng ICT, especially sa education. Dati hindi na pinag-uusapan yung mga online meeting like what we're doing now. Even work from home, wala naman dating work from home. Pag wala ka sa office, Kahit ano ginagawa mo, ginagawa mo yung work mo sa bahay mo, absent ka pa rin, di ba? But now, totally nakaparadigm shift tayo. Puro online na pinag-uusapan na kahit ang deaf at ched, and even the private sector ay nagbago na ng learning online classes na. Almost biglang pinagbawal ng face-to-face -face sa classroom. And instead, online learning na lahat. Di ba? However, this online learning worries a lot of parents. Mostly ang tanong, paano ko maayos ang anak ko? Safe ba ang internet? Paano ko makapantayan ang anak ko laging na online? Bako na ang website ang kanyang pinapuntahan. At ang mga at iba't ibang papangkatanungan para lamang ma-assure ang safety ng mga anak sa paggamit ng internet. This is the purpose of our today's advocacy or seminar, which is about digital parenting. We will try to find out how parents can interact as well as guide their children to their new digital landscape. As we all know naman, mostly mas magagaling pa nga mga anak natin sa pag-internet. But there are ways to still monitor and assist our children to be safe and secure. 
This is our topic. How to be a digital parent to our kids. We have no choice but to embrace the new norms. We have to, do, we have to be the new digital parents to our kids. So I think before you click. Good afternoon, Paul. That's a friendly reminder indeed. Think before you click. Again, this is an initiative. This webinar is an initiative of the Department of Information and Communications Technology in partnership with the Manuel S. Inverga University Foundation. And speaking of, we'll be receiving a, we'll, we'll be hearing a welcome remarks from the Vice President for External Relations of the MSEUF, Mr. Celso D. Habalia. Sir Not yet, sir. Not yet, sir. Uh, kindly unmute po. Can't hear, sir. Kindly unmute, Bob. Okay, am I heard now? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Riego. To Dean Augie Villesa, Jr., to the faculty and students of the College of Computing and Multi-Studies, to our dear parents and stakeholders, a very congenial afternoon. It is with high value to welcome you all on behalf of the Inverga University, headed by our chairman, CEO, Wilfrido L. Inverga, with our university president, Madame Naila Inverga Leveriza, and the entire academic community with a more than 11,000 population, including those in the satellite schools in all the four districts of Quezon province. The university is very pleased with your participation in today's webinar, which is focused on digital parenting, as we are all faced with the global challenges of the fourth or even the fifth industrial revolution. We are also beset with the, with the world crisis brought about by COVID-19 pandemic. The situation is truly unpredictable it affects all sectors, including education. But one thing is sure, Inverga University is able to ship the system with all flexibility. As early as February 2020, the university has already launched the flexible learning modalities in all levels, from the basic education, including senior high school, to the college and postgraduate. But the university, especially the CCMS, believes that behind these learning capabilities of our students, the parents have their significant role in today's generation, in today's world. It, it is not only just on parenting, but more so on digital parenting. Digital parenting sounds stimulating. It involves a lot of concepts. And I believe that our featured speaker this afternoon mm -hmm. has an interesting point to impart with us that will surely pose a great challenge to all parents mm -hmm. in this digital age and world. On this note, again, I wel welcome you all and thank you on behalf of Inverga University. Thank you very much. Mr. Salso Habalia, the Vice President for Exter External Relations of the MSEUF. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, muli aating pong pinasasalamatan ang mga magulang, mga estudyante at mga guro na nakiisa sa webinar natin ngayon tanghaling ito. Of course, again, this is a, a very timely and very important important topic to talk about. Sabi nga natin yung mga ganitong usapin, yung dapat talagang napag-uusapan, lalo na no, we are uh, embracing the online education here and there ang mga anak ng ating mga magulang, ang 
kayo mga estudyante no uh, uh, for for a long long hours no na nakaharap ninyo uh, uh, educational platforms or social media it is very important that we are safe and Sino pa ang best partners dito kundi ang ating mga magulang? All right, that is why this afternoon we will be hearing and learning about parenting in digital age. Let me introduce to you the speaker or our speaker this afternoon. All right, so Ma'am Diana G. P. Faustino is the lead for the Cybersecurity Bureau's awareness and information campaigns focusing on the National Cybersecurity Plan 2022's fourth key imperative, the protection of individuals. She is also part of the Cybersecurity Policy and Standards Team. Ms. Diana Jean is a graduate of the International Cyber Law and Cyber Operations Training Course by Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore and also served as a Philippine delegate in the cyber strategy development of the U.S. Air Force and Armed Forces of the Philippines. Before joining the DICT, she was a system specialist for more than four years where she was exposed to different business solution systems a trainer of the business solutions and systems integration in a private company. She was awarded more than three times as her different project proposals were valuable contributions to an international fair. She is now working under the critical infrastructure evaluation and cybersecurity standards monitoring division of the DICT Cybersecurity Bureau. Ms. Diana Jean has a bachelor's degree in business administration, major in management. It's such an honor and privilege that we have this afternoon, Ms. Diana Jean P. Faustino. Hi, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Hello, po. Good afternoon. Hey, ma'am, am I cleared? Kasi medyo malakas ulan. Loud and clear, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. And thank you, ma'am, Christine. And uh, the Manuel S. and Vera University. And Verga. And Verga, ma'am. Verga University Foundation for inviting the DACP Cybersecurity Bureau. And good afternoon. Maulang hapon sa inyong lahat. So this afternoon, uh, we have another cybersecurity topic. And uh, kanina, you have the cyber wellness, mga cybersecurity tips, di ba? So marami kayong natutunan. And I know na magagamit nyo yun para sa inyo. And, and this afternoon, uh, we, we have the cybersecurity naman relating to the parents. Tayong mga parents and guardians naman. We need to be equipped and updated sa mga cybersecurity features. So, this topic, uh, parenting in the digital age, is very re relatable sa akin kasi I'm also a parent. I'm a mother of... Wow! Her. So, very... Looking young, ma'am! Looking young! <laughs> yes. So, sobrang uh, related, uh, relatable ako and uh, na-experience ko na yung mga... Uh, mga challenges, kung ano-anong efforts na yung ginawa ko and strategies para sa uh, parenting ng mga uh, daughters ko. So, so now, we are in this digital era. So, we're in digitalization has a bigger impact on us and even in parenting, di ba? So, technology is now part of our daily lives. Sabi nga nila, it becoming a necessity. So, part na siya ng uh, buhay natin. Technology, including yung devices natin, gadgets natin, and internet, and even social media. Lahat yan, importante sa atin. Especially, uh, with this new normal, di ba? It helped us to cope uh, the new normal, the pandemic times, and we appreciate how it made our lives uh, easier. So, this digitalization have quickly changed ways in which parents and children communicate and uh, enjoy themselves, acquiring information, and 
solve daily uh, solve problems daily so marami tayong nakukuhang uh, benefits from the technologies so during this pandemic we increase our dependency so mas nagiging reliant tayo on the gadgets on the internet use natin di ba so we use it for uh, work uh, work from home sa mga uh, remote working arrangement we increase also our use para sa mga school so we have the the blended learning mga online classes we also uh, benefited from our business transactions mga bills payments of course online uh, shopping and selling uh, we use also uh, technologies for uh, mga meetings, conferences, even yung mga trainings, di ba? So before we are conducting this uh, mga digital parenting and cybersecurity awareness uh, uh, in person, so pumupunta kami sa mga schools, sa mga municipalities, but now we are doing this online. So we also... Uh, use uh, technologies sa mga bank, loan applications, and also government applications, di ba? So, sobrang pinadali niya yung mga buhay natin. So, technology, uh, we benefited from its advancement. Technology is good. So, hindi naman natin pwedeng sabihin parents na huwag nang gumamit yung kids natin. Kasi we know that this technology, marami tong benefits, lalo na sa mga kids natin today. So we appreciate how technology, how the internet, how our gadgets, social media made our lives easier. But on the flip side, as a parent, of course, along with its benefits, ang concern natin is technology, we see it as hindrance. It brings a lot of concern sa ating mga, sa atin, as a parents and guardians. As this digital time, it changes our kids, it affects our children from our little ones up to our young adults, sa mga teenagers natin. And it also affects, sadly, the children-parent relationship. So this technology, some of us, it weakens yung family relationship. So from traditional parenting, nung wala pang, uh, wala pang technology, so, ibang-iba yung uh, responsibilities. We focus on the physical uh, world, on the, yung mga needs ng kids natin, yung mga basic needs, yung mga uh, dangers on the physical world. But now, we have this digital parenting. Uh, but nito is a bunch of responsibilities. So, as a parents and guardians, we need to guide them, we need to help them. And of course, our main objective is to keep them safe from all the dangers that surrounds all children from the physical world and from the uh, dangers in the cyberspace we want them to protect from hundreds or thousands of online dangers online risks and of course the effects of technology so don't pass on digital parenting so let's move on with my presentation. Let me put up my slides. So, so have you experienced this kind of outdoor activity? Or are you familiar with these games? So, or kami, uh, actually, na-experience ko lahat ng mga outdoor activities. This is called uh, Luxong Tinik. So, we, uh, during our, uh, day, uh, our days, we mostly spend our days playing outside, as in literal, uh, larong palye. So, maraming outdoor activities uh, with our mga kids on the neighborhood, mga kababata namin and friends. So, lahat yan, na-experience na namin before. And not na-enjoy namin lahat as in. And, but today, uh, yung mga kids ba natin ngayon or children, can they name uh, kahit isang outdoor activity? 
So maybe some or most of the kids hindi na familiar, di ba? So hindi na nila alam yung mga ganyang classing activities. So hindi na kasi nila na-experience. So because we see our kids today like this. Ayan. With their iPads, with their mobile phones, with their tablets. So very common na na nakikita natin everywhere na during pre-pandemic times, di ba? Kahit nasan sila, nasa mall, nasa school, uh, abang nasa sakyan, may mga gatherings, pero they are glued. So nakadikit sa mga kamay nila, yung mga mata nila nakastick uh, sa mga gadgets nila. So we seen our kids preoccupied with their gadgets, with their uh, mobile phones, in, uh, and gross in playing games watching movies or videos, texting, messaging, creating videos. So, yun yung mga normal na nakikita natin ngayon sa ating mga kids. Mapa toddlers yan, mapa elementary uh, age yan, or mapa teenager yan, di ba? So, very common. So, technology is good, sabi ko ma. But if this is not properly used and meron ng excessive use of it, then it comes unhealthy. Hindi na nagiging tanga. So some, some says there is a fine line between technology being beneficial and the technology being uh, destructive. And many of the children today have crossed that line. So meaning the youth today, yung mga kabataan natin ngayon, are overusing the technologies. And it is the biggest challenge for parents how we convince our children to avoid uh, too much screen time. Tama, di ba? So, what is digital parenting? Digital parenting is teaching kids responsible use of the ICT or the information and communications technology. And Tayo mga parents, we call ourselves as digital parents. And also, hindi lang parents, it also includes uh, guardians who take over, who take care of the children, and even the tito, tita, uh, elder, kuya and ate, and of course, pati yung mga teachers natin. They are the digital parents. And in doing digital parenting, we have uh, three objectives, which is first, to be model responsible on the technology use. So as a parents and guardians, we have a contribution or malaking factor na kukuha sa atin ng mga children natin kung paano nila gagamitin yung technology or yung digital native nila. And one important thing that we want them to see from us is the proper use of it, how we maintain the balance, and of course, uh, meron tayong good habit in using our devices, in using technologies. So from us palang parents and guardians, it all starts sa atin palang. Kung ano nakikita nila sa atin, na-adapt nila. So malaki yung uh, impact natin sa ICT use ng mga anak natin. And next is uh, deliberately teach digital citizenship. So as we became the model uh, of our kids, we must portray and guide them to be a good digital citizen. So what is digital citizen? As defined by Miss Karen Mossberger, one of the authors of digital citizenship, um, digital citizen is a person using information technology in order to engage in society, politics, and government. So, it is the use of internet while being responsible and effective. It all involves us. Lahat ng gumagamit who uses the technology. So, we are not just tech users. May mga responsibilities tayo as a user. So, as a user, we must act appropriately and responsibly. And part of a good digital citizen, we know the do's and don'ts. So, while online, to avoid the consequences of our actions in cyberspace. 
And take note, whatever we put online, it will remain online. Or, yung sinasabi nga nila, sa internet, may forever dyan. So, may forever tayo sa cyberspace. What we call yung digital footprints. Yan yung mga naiiwan natin kung ano man yung nilagay natin online. So, we must be careful on what to share, what to post, what to react online. So, as a good digital citizen, we must practice your respect to others, such as a uh, polite on how we communicate with our other online users, avoid natin yung negative thoughts, negative uh, comments, mean messages, so, and also we should respect the privacy and the uh, yung personal information ng bawat isa. And also, as a good digital citizen, we must be uh, mindful, maging mapanuri sa mga nakikita natin. Hindi lahat ng nakikita natin sa internet ay totoo. Uh, fake news are all over the internet. So, we must validate the facts and the fake news. And by then, nakifilter natin. And hindi na tayo makakadagdag sa pagpapakalap ng mga fake news, di ba? And lastly, a good digital citizen know how to keep themselves protected, responsibly securing their information, their devices. So, bakit kailangan natin ituloy yung digital citizenship as a parent? Kasi teaching them to be a good digital citizen is one way of protecting them sa mga online dangers. Kasi once they are uh, careful on their actions sa internet, nababawasan yung possibility na maput into danger sila online as they are properly equipped. And last objective is of course, monitor, monitor the online time or screen time of our children. So we don't want them to overuse, to misuse, since we know that overexposure to gadgets may lead to health problems, negative effects, diba? But one thing to protect them as, and be a good digital parent is not easy. Super challenging, diba? Ang dami natin challenges na na-encounter as a parent. And so we are some common challenges we face while we parenting our digital kids. So first is lack of understanding of the emerging technologies. So we notice the kids today are tech savvy. Toddlers already know how to search for their favorite videos, uh, use iPads, tablets, and phones na walang kahirap-hirap, di ba? They are in this touch generation. So, study shows that children today have this natural ability to adapt to the new technologies because they are born and raised in this digital age time. So, namulat sila na nasa paligid na nila or environment na nila ang technology. And with their advancement, on the other hand, parents having this lack of understanding of the technology may interfere the connections between the children and uh, the parents or yung tinatawag nating digital age gap wherein there is a difference between parents and children um, the knowledge about how to use the interactive technology so meron ding differences on their on how they appreciate use or yung perception nila sa technology. So, have you experienced your kids ask you something about their devices or something na nakita nila online? And you can even answer him or her. Hindi mo siya ma-help kasi you're not familiar with it. You don't know, even know how to use it. So, tendency, they don't get a help from you they will ask other people. They will ask their online friends or the not-so-known person online because if they want an instant uh, answer, they want yung masasagot agad yung question nila or yung problem nila. 
And by that, so next time, hindi na sila sa'yo lalapit. They will not ask you kasi uh, once or twice or for ilang times, hindi mo siya na-help kasi hindi mo alam yung uh, hindi ka familiar, hindi ka aware. So next time, ang magiging takbuhan niya is yung online friend niya or someone na naka-help sa kanila. And this will cause now yung digital divide among the parents and the kids. That's why some of the parents have this disconnection na tinatawag sa kanilang children. And this will be the hindrance or yung barrier na dun sa relationship ng magulang at anak. So that's why it is a very it is a challenge sa uh, sa ating mga parents na meron tayong lack of understanding on technologies. So parents, guardians, we really need to learn how to use. Kahit let's start with the very basic lang po. Hindi naman kailangan na alam mo lahat ng pasikot-sikot sa internet, pasikot-sikot ng devices mo, di ba? So, uh, it's basic. Let's start with how we use the devices, yung how we use internet. Not necessarily alam mo lahat eh. Just enough lang na you know how to help them, you know how to guide them in their uh, ICT use, di ba? So in today's situation, we increase our dependency. We need to update ourselves. Kasi nagiging part na nga siya, di ba, ng ating uh, daily lives. For example, uh, on their online classes, Sobrang bago, di ba? Very new for all of us, lalo na sa mga anak natin. So, it is better for us to know the how to set up yung online class platform, ano yung mga features ng online class platform na gagamitin. And of course, uh, we know to we know what are the basic, kahit basic security, so we can practice, so we can uh, provide we can protect our kids online. So, kailangan talaga nating uh, i-update yung mga sarili natin for us to adapt dun sa mga needs ng anak natin para mag-guide natin sila ng tama. Sabi nga, we cannot protect our kids from the things we are not aware of. And next uh, challenge for us is the overexposure to gadgets. And of course, uh, the physical health issues. So, sabi, it, kids overexposure or excessive use causes different health issues such as physical health issues, uh, mental health issues, and it also affects the cognitive development of our children. And studies shows that too much use of gadgets is dangerous to all of us, hindi lang sa mga kids. Pero, mas doble sa mga children natin kasi our kids are in this developmental stage. So sabi nga, uh, a person up to 24 years old, na de de uh, hindi pa siya completely na de develop And lastly is the social impairment. Add ko lang dun sa other health issues is, in a research from Dr. Eric Sigman, a U.S.-based psychologist, he claimed that prolonged use of uh, gadgets can lead to screen dependency disorder or SDD, so, which affects as young as 3 to 4 years old. So, nakakatakot may ganong disorder na pala. So, akala natin na uh, medyo priority lang nila yung gadgets, yung pala disorder na para sa kanila or addiction na pala yun. So, kids with SDD, so, pagising pa lang, anong hinahanap? Cellphone. Anong titignan agad yung mga notifications nila, cellphone nila. Bago sila bumangon, nag, uh, mga one or two hours na silang nag-online muna, ba? So, hinahanap-hanap nila yung uh, gadgets nila in their eyes para nang nakaglue. They are glued to their screens and loses social impairment or yung, uh, loses outside interest. So, gadgets affects the interactions, uh, impacting yung depth and quality interactions with their families, with their parents. 
it's lonely disconnecting them with their families. So have you noticed your kids, uh, when you're talking to your kids and he or she is, uh, is in their gadget, so parang wala, siyang, wala kang kausap, diba? They don't respond. Wala kang nakuha any response sa kanila. Ni hi, ni ho, wala. So, wala siyang pakailang sa paligid niya. And also, uh, since preoccupied sila with their gadgets, you, they put too much attention to their gadgets. Yun nga yung social impairment. Kaya, uh, sometimes, uh, mostly sa mga teenagers, they isolating themselves alone sa room nila, doing online lang. So, mas mahalaga ng makapag-online sila kesa makasama or makausap yung family members, di ba? And, one example also is during meal time at home or kahit nakadine in case favorite restaurants nyo, magkakasama kayo together family. Pero parang wala naman kayo sa isa't isa. You're not together actually kasi uh, si kuya naka-phone, si bunso, ganun din, naka-tablet, and then si mom and dad, ganun din, may kausap sa phones. Or minsan si mom and dad nagtitingin na na lang kasi mga kids na hindi nila maawat. So, sayang yung uh, dapat uh, time together, nag interact kayo, nagko-communicate kayo with each other, di ba? So, let, talking about the physical effects or yung too much gadgets, let me give you some of the most common effects sa mga kids natin. So, ito yung mga different news na nababalita, di ba, due to prolonged use of gadgets. So, hindi to biro kasi news and studies prove it. So, here's the 10 effects of gadgets on our kids. So, first is aggression. If you notice, yung kids mo, they are becoming moody. As in, uh, aggressive na sila due to long hours of using gadgets. So, lalo na, uh, if we try na kunin yung gadgets or hiramin, Anong gagawin nila? They will tantrums. Magta-tantrums sila, magiging stubborn sila, and ayaw nilang mag-stop sila, di ba? Ayaw nilang ibalik sa'yo. Or minsan, ibabalik nila sa'yo, galit pa. And yung mga teenagers natin, pag tinawag mo, ayaw nilang magpa-storbo, nagagalit din, di ba? So, ganun yung nagiging uh, attitude or behavior ng mga children's natin. It is because of their too much desire or yung addictions na nila sa kanilang gadgets. So, yung tantrums are common forms of aggressiveness. And sometimes, they use it as tactics, lalo ng mga toddlers natin, para mag-give in tayo sa gusto nila. Kung mag-iingay sila, magwawala sila, para lang ibalik natin yung phones, di ba? And there are times na nakukuha nila yung ganyang uh, aggressiveness, yung ganyang emotions or attitude sa mga online games, sa mga other people or friends online, sa mga nakaka-interact naka, naka nila, sa mga kalaro nila online, and also sa mga nakikita nila or napapanood nila, they can adapt kung ano yung nakikita nila online. So, nagkakaroon minsan na yun nga, pag uh, pinagbawalan mo siya, pinagsabihan mo siya, nagkakaroon kayo ng conflict or tampuhan, which is not healthy sa family, di ba? And hindi magandang effect yun sa kanila kasi as they becoming addicted, they are more likely to be, uh, they are more likely to confront and disobey us. So, as early as we can, help them na i-take down or i-cut natin yung screen time nila. Kasi pag mas sanay na sila na uh, sa screens, excessive use na sila, mas nahihirapan tayo, lalo na sa uh, mga changes sa mga behaviors nila. And next is obesity. So, children will rely uh, their playing time in front of screens rather than playing offline tend to be obvious. So, especially when they are Nasa bahay lang, uh, during this pandemic, medyo hindi pa rin pwede lumabas lahat, di ba? So, limited yung activities nila and they tend to engage more sa gadgets. And so, the lack of physical activities 
ng mga anak natin, they do not burn enough calories. And may cause, yun nga, pagiging obese nila. As we know, yung obesity leads to complications such as diabetes, heart attack, and even stroke. So, uh, parents, we must encourage our kids to do physical play or activities more than uh, doing online. They must understand yung benefits of playing, including uh, walking, running, exercise. Also, uh, children can get fit alone. Uh, doing these activities, plus they build relationship with the friends, with the family, like uh, si father and son playing basketball together with the kuya, di ba? So, nanonurture natin yung mind ng kids natin, plus nanonurture din natin yung social uh, aspect nila. Kasi natuturuan natin sila makipag-socialize or makipag-kapwa-tao. And next is the sleep disorder. So, Anong oras na ba natutulog ang mga kids ngayon? Before, di ba, parang 7 or 8, kailangan tulog ng mga bata. But now, umaabot na midnight na gising, na gising pa ang mga anak natin. So, children who get addicted to their gadgets uh, miss out yung needed rest. So, uh, the too much screen time makes it more difficult for us to fall asleep kasi yung blue light comes from our screen, suppresses the sleep hormone melatonin, which is, uh, it shifts the body's natural sleep-wake cycle. So, nasisira natin yung cycle ng katawan natin. Na imbis na nagpapahinga na yung uh, katawan natin, nagre-restore na siya ng energy uh, for the next day, no overuse pa natin yung katawan natin. And tendency, nagkakasakit tayo. So, advice ko is at least two hours before the bedtime. Wala na sanang gadgets. Some parents, ginagawa nila, kinoconfiscate nila yung mga gadgets uh, before bedtime. So, para na, uh, natutulungan natin sila na unti-unti, na, hindi na sila mahirapang makatulog. Next is dry eyes. So, due to prolonged exposure of screen, causes eye constraints. So, sobrang focus nila nababawasan yung blinking time. So, ang uh, normal or general, uh, generally, 10 blinks per minute ang isang tao. Which is yung blinking time, it is the cleaning process ng eyes to remove impurities para hindi rin madry yung eyes. And also, expert says that good eyesight largely depends on, uh, upon staring at things at a varying distance. So, Kung ang mga kids natin nakatutok lang sa screen, so ang hindi na de-develop yung, uh, yung eyesight nila sa ibang mga distances. So ang tendency, mas malabo mata nila or nagiging nearsighted lang sila yung pagmalalayo na hindi na nila nakikita. And of course, dry eyes may also lead to multiple eye problems or infections mapapansin natin yung mga kids natin na mumula-mula na yung eyes, di ba, pag matagal na si cellphone or minsan kusot na ng kusot ng eyes, maluha-luha na. So, kasi nadadry na yung eyes nila. So, next is cancer. So, connected to the uh, radiation, in 2011, the World Health Organization released a report that uh, saying that gadgets are considered as the two beer waves. So, because of the radiation emission and other studies also prove it na nakaka-apekto nga ang uh, radiation galing sa mga uh, devices natin. So, radiation may uh, disassemble atoms and cause the DNA damage in cells. So, leading to potentially serious side effects which is yung cancer nga like leukemia or yung blood cancer and other uh, cancer. Next is back pain. So, if we notice while using gadgets, nakaupo lang sila, di ba? So, medyo less ang movement. So, ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng uh, multiple, multiple back pains. And also, pati yung uh, good postures, hindi na nila na pa-practice. And next is stress. So, instead na yung entertainment or uh, they feel happy, they feel na 
marami silang natututunan sa internet, they, instead, they feel stress. Yung mga kids natin, yung mga children natin, teenagers natin, they feel stress while doing online. Uh, stress on their games, lalo na if hindi maganda yung laro or medyo weak yung mga kalaro nila. And also, they feel stress sa mga nababasa sa internet, sa mga comments, sa mga information or news na nakikita online. And also, they feel stress when uh, naghihintay sila ng notifications, tumunog yung phone nila. Titignan nila kung ilang likes na ba, nagka-count sila, ilang reactions na ba meron sa post nila or sa pictures nila. So, nai-stress sila nang dahil lang sa cellphones or gadgets. So, if you try na mag-visit ka sa doctor, uh, you complain uh, headache for ilang days or stomach ache for ilang days, anong tatanong sa'yo ng doctor? Tatanong sa'yo if stress ka ba? Kasi we all know that yung stress, it causes uh, iba't ibang uh, iba't ibang mga nararamdaman nating sakit sa katawan. So, akala natin may napaparanoid na tayo, may something sa head natin kasi ilang araw na siyang masakit or weeks yung pala, stress lang siya. May stress lang kasi may uh, nag-comment sa kanya sa online, hindi maganda. So, yun na. Isip na siya ng isip. So, nai-stress yung mga kids natin. Next is tennis elbow. So, due to prolonged use, yun nga, uh, and also lack of movement dun sa may um, part ng siko natin, nawawala ng proper blood circulations. Next is lose track of your surrounding, which is the social impairment, as I discussed. Uh, nakakasira ng family relationship kasi wala nang pakialam sa paligid or sa mga taong nasa kasama niya sa bahay. So, gadgets are killing the development of our child Instead of going out, learning the way of the world, running, playing, socializing with others, they rather stay at home and do online. So it weakens and damages the parent-child relationship. Next is hearing problems. So it weaken or it causes uh, multiple hearing problems due to prolonged use of mga headset, lalo na kapag sobrang lakas ng volume. Unti-unti from uh, medyo mas may masakit, then minsan dadaing na nila parang medyo humihina yung pandinig. So that's because of yung uh, too much use of yung mga headphones. So maraming nang tatanong, ano ba yung... Uh, too much and uh, enough lang na screen time sa mga kids natin. So, the World Health Organization uh, suggested screen times by ages. So, first, under 18 months old, so no screen time outside from video chatting with families or relatives. So, uh, our babies, they don't need gadgets, di ba? Tama? What our babies need is our time, our physical touch, our attention, of course, and our love. So they are uh, little human beings. So they need human interactions. They need emotional bond from parents and family. But if dun sa mga parents na hindi maiwasan, uh, we suggest that less than one Less than half hour a day and hindi siya continuous na half hour, isang upuan lang. Uh, we suggest na, uh, kunwari is 10 minutes and then mamaya ulit 10 minutes. Kung hindi lang maiiwasan. If, but if may iwasan natin, no screen time is uh, much better. And also, please do co-watching. So, nasa tabi yung parents habang nag uh, we'll watch ng videos yung kids kasi maraming uh, maraming online risks or dangers na hindi natin alam baka makita ng mga kids natin kahit babies yan diba? we don't want them na makakita ng kahit na anong hindi appropriate sa kanya diba? and also nagbabond kayo kasi na-explain mo sa kanya or sinasabayan niyo yung uh, nursery rhymes diba? next is toddlers so 
Little to no screen time is recommended. So, they are in the critical development stage. So, they should be away as much as possible sa mga gadgets. So, study says early exposure sa mga gadgets ng toddlers may cause delays on their development like speech delay, uh, delay on the cognitive and physical delay. So, and even yung behavior it also affects our toddlers kasi they can adopt what they see online. So, minsan may mapapansin kayo yung uh, isang bata, since uh, mas madalas siyang nago online hindi na na-develop masyado or na, hindi niya masyado napapractice yung motor skills ng mga kamay niya, ng paa niya. So, minsan uh, ilang taon na siya, hindi pa siya marunong magsalita, hindi pa siya marunong maglakad, di ba? Pero napakagaling na niyang mag, uh, gumamit ng gadgets. So because of uh, masyado nating na, na-introduce sa kanila ang uh, gadgets. So if we don't allow, again, if hindi kayang tanggalin, uh, recommend is one, at least less than one hour a day lang. Kasi we should encourage yung mga toddlers natin to do physical activities. A lot of physical activities. So, including yung interactions with the family and of course, learning. Kasi if, and of course, if we do, we if we allow them, let's have, uh, tayo yung mamimili ko ano yung mga videos na pwedeng panoorin ng mga kids natin. Example, and for us to choose high educational or quality appropriate uh, videos para panoorin nila. And of course, do co-watching again. So, it will create bonding plus mas panatag ka na si- hindi siya makakakita ng hindi appropriate sa age niya. And of course, na-explain mo sa kanya yung mga napapanood niya. And next is preschoolers. So, one hour, take note at this stage, they are mindful. They have ideas na on the characters na papanood nila. So, they can actually adapt kung ano yung nakikita nila, talagang ginagaya na nila. So, as early as this stage, my curiosity na din yung mga kids natin. So, mas magiging maingat dapat tayo. Mas bantayan natin yung mga kids natin pag gumagamit sila ng gadgets and internet. And of course, since preschoolers, so may online class na sila, may mga module na rin yung mga kids natin. So, let's separate itong one hour na to, which is yung free time nila sa uh, school hours nila. So, next is elementary school age. So, one to one and a half hours per day are recommended. So, hindi naman yung masasabi ng kids natin na Puro naman tayo pagbabawal. Bakit? Eh, ang technology nga is part of our lives na. It helped us. May raming benefit. So, we allow them. Pero, separate again ito sa ating, uh, sa kanilang online school. And of course, let's have them free time. Pero, teach them na may balance dapat. So, mag-discipline na tayo ng mga uh, anak natin on this stage. And of course, on the middle age, middle school age, which is 11 to 13 years old, so up to 2 hours per day are recommended ng WHO or World Health Organization. So, 2, two hours per day, free time nila yan. Again, ha, separate from their uh, school hours. So, by this age, let's teach them to have a balance on their activities on their daily activities, as in may routine silang susundin. And by schedule, so by this age, nadidiscipline na sila on prioritizing yung mga activities nila and also nadidiscipline din natin silang, uh, nadidiscipline din sila sa sarili nila. So these are all recommendations lang ng uh, so, you can still set your screen time with your kids kung ano yung mas applicable, ano yung, um, ano yung mas realistic sa family mo and sa kids mo. So, technology should be encouraged and yet moderated. It is a new generation. 
where kids should get right amount of knowledge over such advancement. So, kailangan uh, tayo yung magiging guide nila. Para hindi sila mag-overuse. And next is, aside from objective and challenges, we have seven steps to good digital parenting. So, first is, listen to your children. It sounds simple, di ba? But minsan, ito yung nakakalimutan natin. And let's uh, listen to our children. Let's accept na fact, uh, the fact na may mga bagay na alam sila na hindi natin alam. Uh, tapos, yung mga younger kids natin, natural sa kanila maraming kwento, uh, maraming sinasabi, maraming tanong. And huwag tayong mainis, mga parents. Kasi uh, sabi nga nila, minsan lang sila maging batas. So, let's enjoy na yung... Itong moment na to na ganyan sila, marami silang tanong sa'yo, lagi ka nilang inaas, bakit ganyan, how, why, bakit, anong nangyari, bakit ganyan, kasi uh, let's be happy kasi na tayo yung pinagtatanungan nila. Tayo yung, uh, ito yung moment na tayo yung tinatrust ng mga uh, kids natin. So, baka kasi pag medyo at uh, tumanda na sila, dumating yung times na hahanapin natin yung gantong moment. Yung kinakausap tayo ng anak natin, tayo yung pinagtatanungan ng mga anak natin, tayo yung kinoconsult, ba diba? So, let's be happy na ganyan sila. Uh, cherish the moment, sabi nga. And <clears throat> sa mga, uh, mostly sa mga teenagers naman, we should know how to listen kasi If we don't listen to our kids, to our children, parang wala silang privilege na mag-voice out, ba? Diba? So, they feel left out or not important sa family. So, if we allow them, if we listen to them, kung napapractice natin yung good communications, it's a two-way. Uh, hindi lang parents ang laging nagsasalita, ang laging uh, may say, laging may opinion. Our kids also, our children also have, have their opinions. And if we allow them or we listen to them, hindi natin alam na step na pala yun na our children, yung mga anak natin, is having trust and comfortable sila. Nakausapin tayo sa mga iba't ibang bagay. Kasi now, uh, na-feel nila, nakita nila na we are here to listen. So pati yung, especially our teenagers, they will open up ng mas... Uh, They will open up sa atin frequently or mostly na sa, sa atin na sila mag-open up. Kasi ah, nakita nila na yung communications is nakukuha niya sa bahay. So, ang sarap sa feeling na pag may problem sila, sa atin sila lalapit. Ah, lalo na teenagers, di ba? Medyo some of the teenagers hindi na parents ang nilalapitan. Or kinakausap sa mga ah, problems nila. So, keeping an open line communications with our children, uh, let's talk early, let's talk often, and of course, be open and direct. So, actually, this lockdown, if we look in the positive side, uh, we are given so much time or chances para mag-reconnect sa ating mga anak, di ba? Chances na magka-time, makausap natin sila, makamusta natin sila, magka-bonding, di ba? So, huwag nating sayangin yung time na binigay sa atin para magkasama ulit tayo with our kids. So, if pre-pandemic, uh, more than 8 hours, kasama na yung traveling time natin, papasok tayo sa office, sa work. So, less time tayo sa mga kids natin, di ba? Minsan, hindi na nga natin sila nakakausap pag uuwi tayo ng bahay. So, this time, let's use this time chances na ma-regain yung our connections, yung happy and healthy relationship ng family. So, next is educate yourselves. So, sabi nga nila, this is probably the first technology in human history where kids are leading the adults. So, just like what I've said, uh, mag-explore din tayo, mag-update tayo sa sarili natin. 
we need na malaman din natin kung ano yung mga uh, nasa internet, yung mga devices natin. We need to explore so hindi tayo mapag-iiwanan. And of course, we know how to guide our kids na, lalo na sa kanilang uh, digital uh, digital use. So we cannot guide them sa mga bagay na hindi natin alam. Alam ng anak natin, tayo hindi natin alam. So pag nagtanong sila, wala tayong sasagot. So we can't deny na mas tumaas ng dependency natin sa technology. So mostly we rely on technology or internet, di ba, sa mga transactions natin na ma-maximize yung use of ICT. So kailangan talaga mag-update tayo sa sarili natin. Educate ourselves. Next is use parental controls. So these parental controls can actually help uh, help us to protect our children while they are using their gadgets or online. So there are a lots of dangers online and cyber criminals that our kids can face. So uh, parents, you can use parental controls, different parental controls on their gadgets, on the Wi-Fi at your home. On the applications like yung mga uh, social media accounts ng mga kids natin and uh, yung mga privacy settings. Let's turn on yung mga privacy settings para ma-secure natin yung mga accounts ng mga kids natin. And of course, our kids, maprotektahan natin sila sa mga cyber criminals na nagkalat dyan sa internet. And you can explore your smartphones. May mga features dyan like you can limit or restrict uh, certain applications na inappropriate sa kanila. You can set password on each uh, applications na hindi dapat ma-open ng mga kids nyo. So, may mga features din on our phones na you can set screen time wherein after uh, after that certain time, it will automatically turn off. So, hindi na siya magagamit ng kids mo. So, may iwasan yung... Uh, Excessive use of gadgets. And of course, sa mga account setting example is yung uh, sa YouTube. You can log into your account and then click mo yung sa may picture icon in the top right corner. And then in sa settings, go to the settings. And then meron dyan, uh, you can turn on yung mga restrictions. So medyo malilimit natin yung mga uh, videos na inappropriate sa mga kids natin. And much better, you can use YouTube Kids app. It is a safer online uh, experience for our kids with uh, parental controls. Kasi may mga password din dyan na hindi pwedeng mag-search yung kids mo. You can turn on, turn off yung search and search para hindi na mag-search yung kids mo. So, and also, it is age-appropriate kung anong age ng kids mo. So, yung mga uh, lalabas na Suggested videos is age appropriate sa mga kids mo. And uh, if you're using iPhone naman, you can go to settings dun sa may uh, general or restrictions. You can turn it on also and set a password. So, um, or you can control kung ano yung mga content or websites na pwedeng i-visit ng anak mo. So, you can... Uh, you just explore your uh, your gadgets and devices. And next is set ground rules and apply sanctions. So be strict. Wag yung tatantrums nga lang, di ba? Tactics na ng mga anak natin, iiyakan lang tayo. Give in na agad tayo. Remember, we don't want them na we, we want them to avoid yung mga effects sa gadgets, di ba? And alam natin na weaknesses nila, weaknesses natin is sila. So, gagamitan nila tayo ng tantrums. So, if uh, you set ground rules, please be strict. And also, if setting ground rules, I recommend na this is both agreed by the parents and the children. So, mas madali for our children na sundin yun kasi you involve them uh, involve them in uh, listing kung ano yung mga ground rules or how, house rules nyo sa bahay so it also create healthier relationships yun nga ba kasi pag may involvement 
mas nafe-feel ng mga anak natin yung importance sa bahay, sa family, and sa parents. Especially yung mga teenagers natin. Para hindi nila ma-feel yung left out sila o ma-feel nila instead is importante yung voice nila. So, balik tayo doon sa mga communication and listen to your kids, di ba? So, by asking their opinions, nafe-feel nila appreciated sila. So, example of the ground rules are uh, follow ng mga kids natin. And of course, tayo, dapat mga parents, we also follow our house rules. So, since tayo yung role model, di ba? So, two hours a day before, uh, two hours before bedtime, yun nga, uh, wala ng gadgets. Of course, we can set yung during meal time as in no gadgets, mapa parents or mapa kids. And of course, you can set uh, yung mga t smart TV, yung mga laptops and computers on a common area. So you can supervise your children. And of course, we can also set rules depende kung ano yung mas applicable sa ating families. And of course, sa inyong kids, syempre. And yun nga, if we set rules, susundin natin lahat. As in, pati yung parents, susundin din po natin. So, di nila sasabing unfair. Bakit si mami during mealtime nag-phones, nag accept ng calls? Pero bakit yung mga kids bawal? So, we should uh, follow also our own rules, parents. Next is friend, follow, but don't stop. So, know their activities, so, gusto ba natin na yung mga ilang libo yung friends, FB friends, Instagram followers sa mga kids natin? Or may tatlo silang accounts kayo, parents, ni isa doon o hindi kayo ina-accept as friends? Or hindi nyo alam na may tatlo silang accounts? So, it is important na friend natin or updated tayo, we stay uh, informed dun sa mga online activities ng kids natin. Kaya mahalagang friends tayo ng kids natin online. So we know what are what they posting, what's, uh, kung baka may problem sila sa social media nila nilalabas, di ba? Or baka may mga nambubuli na sa kanila, may mga cyber uh, criminals na pala or pen perpetrators na na bumibiktima sa kids nyo. So it is very important na we know their activities, updated tayo sa kanila. But do not stop. Huwag naman tayo overreacting. Huwag tayong OA. Uh, we, uh, talking instead of stalking. Kasi minsan, kakastalk natin sa mga kids natin lahat na ng post nila, especially our teens, kinomenta natin. And then minsan, napapahiya natin sila without uh, aware of it. So, some... Um, Minsan, napinagalita mo siya online. So, ang nangyari, napahiya yung anak mo sa mga online friends niya and sasama yung loob niya sa'yo or i-unfriend ka pa niya. So, hindi ka na uh, updated sa nangyayari sa kanya. Or minsan, yung ginawa mo sa kanya, napinagalita mo siya online, ginaw, ginamit yun ng uh, cyber criminals or ng bully. Binuli siya dahil dun sa ginawa mo sa anak mo. So, uh, teenagers are sensitive. Kasi nga naman, di ba, uh, billions are using internet. So, napakaraming makakakita kung ano man yung sabihin mo sa anak mo. So, instead of pagalita mo siya online, while uh, talk to your kids, and dun mo siya pagsabihan, personally mo siya sabihan, or huwag dun sa social media. And of course, if we notice yung mga kids natin nagiging uh, sobrang close or close sa mga social media friends nila kahit hindi nila personally kilala, di ba? So, hindi malayo na pag friends din kayo online is magiging closer pa kayo ng anak mo. Sabi nga, a supportive and understanding parents, yun yung hinahanap ng mga anak natin. So, pag nakita ng mga anak natin na ganun tayo, uh, they, it will create a positive step towards yung healthy relationship ng parents and children. Next is explore, share, and celebrate. So, explore together with your kids. Pwede naman kayo mag-online together in a limited time, of course. Bonding kayo together, share your ideas, uh, ano yung mga interest nyo. 
You can also connect with other relatives or friends using social media, virtual bonding kayo, di ba? So, uh, marami rin na uso. Now also, you create uh, video messages or greetings or of course, mga dance video ng mother and daughter or father and son. So, nagiging bonding time yun na yung online. And of course, uh, ang ganda nung result nun sa relationship ng kids and parents. But most importantly, explore and be together Offline. So, hindi lang laging online. Haluan natin lagi ng offline. So, we have balance in our uh, activities and routines. So, there are a lot of activities you can, you and your kids can do or your whole family can do instead of overspending sa gadgets. And if, dahil ina-encourage natin sa mga anak natin uh, to have uh, more physical activities. And of course, be a good digital role model. So, uh, do you know, parents, guardians, that your kids are watching you? So, if parent, if they see their parents are uh, using gadgets too much or sobra ng uh, tutok din sa gadgets yung nanay at tatay niya. So, the kids' tendency, gagayahin niya. They will copy you. So, they will follow yung digital habit mo. They see... Uh, yun nga, during meal time, si mommy and daddy nagsa-cellphone pa din. So, on tendency, hindi na nila susundin yung house rules. Gagayahin ka nila. So, parents should be the role model of our children. So, ito yung pinaka-objectives natin, di ba? Maging role model tayo sa mga kids natin. So, we should model the behavior we want sa mga kids natin. Practice what you preach, sabi nga nila. So, uh, we mod, uh, be a role model na meron tayong good digital habits, meron tayong digital balance, and of course, we practice or pinap we portray good digital citizenship. So, next is relate naman natin on this, uh, on this data, the use of social media of our children from young adults to teenagers. So, here... Uh, here's the data from We Are Social and Hootsuite last July 2020. I don't know if meron ng updated ngayon na uh, results. So in this uh, graph, with 1.1% uh, increase from last year, July last year and today, 1.1% increase yung populations. And with that uh, increase ng populations, may 2.4% naman na increase on mobile phone users. And with internet users, uh, increase of 8.2% and active social media users, 10.5% last year versus itong year na to. And next is uh, daily time spent with media so ages 16 to 64 years old ito yung mga uh, average amount each day so using the internet 6 hours 42 minutes using social media 2 hours 22 minutes and watching television 3 hours 22 minutes listening to music and so on so this is average pero yung mga kids natin Tama ba? 2 hours and 22 minutes lang sila nagsosocial media? Or nag 6 hours lang sila gumagamit ng internet? Some of our kids maybe are using more than this average. So yun na yung tinatawag na overuse na yung mga kids natin. Too much screen time. So lumalabas na rin yung iba siya na may mga addiction na sa gadgets. So, next is the social media use around the world. So, with 3.96 billion, there are active social media users all around the world with 51% penetrations versus the population. So, and with annual growth of 10.5% increase, and with the total number of users ng social media accessing via phones is 3.9 billion. So, ganyang karami yung mga gumagamit ngayon. 
lalo na ng pandemic, mas nag-increase, di ba? So, with this other graphs naman is, this is the perspectives on how internet users ages 16 to 64. So, pasok dito yung mga kids, yung mga teenagers natin engage with social media. So, 99% they use or visited social network or a messaging services. So, connectivity kasi, di ba, during pandemic times, ito yung pinakaisa sa gamit ng uh, social media sa, ma sa ating lahat, connectivity. Next is 88% contributed to social media in the past month, engaged actively, 2 hours, 22 minutes, yung average amount daw on social media, with 8.8 .8 average number of social media accounts for internet users, and 40% uh, we use social media for work purposes. And with this, uh, during COVID-19, there's, uh, kung makikita natin sa graph, the average uh, spending time on social media is 43% lang. But, titignan natin, on top one is Philippines. So, 64% yung gumagamit ng social media during this COVID-19 lang. And with the increase of social media use, unang-una dyan is the 16 to 24 years old. So, pasok na pasok dito yung mga anak natin. They use, they are the large, large uh, user of social media with 58%. If of course, hindi naman nagpapahuli ang mga mamit daddies, di ba? Nandiyan yung 44 to 40% or 34%. And ah. Uh, and even our senior citizen, 27%, they spend uh, using social media. So, lahat tayo talaga gumagamit ng social media. So, uh, social media, since at uh, yung mga anak natin o yung kabataan ngayon, ang pinaka biggest users ng social media, uh, let's try to discuss a few or some informations on social media. So, it is an interactive computer-mediated technologies that facilitate the creation of sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression via virtual communities and networks. So, pasok dyan ang mga uh, social media like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, WeChat, so pasok lahat yan dyan. Yan yung mga social media apps or platforms. So, sabi nga, hindi naman gagawin yung mga social media na yan kung walang benefit. So, we benefited a lot from social media. So, it is very useful. Hindi natin madede na yan. So, first is connectivity, di ba? First advantage and pinaka-use ng social media is connectivity to keep in touch with others, with your family and friends, with your teachers, with your classmates, diba? Next is education. So, we use social media for education. Napakaraming online classes, online training, webinars, or mga e-learning tutorials na nakikita natin sa mga social media. Next is uh, promotion. So, we can promote yung mga advocacies natin, promote our businesses, diba? Since uh, social media is the largest or audience for sa mga businesses natin. Next is help. So you can share your issues with community to help help. Pwede na in terms of mga rescue, mga missing relatives, di ba? Or mga advices through your uh, mga friends. So we also benefited from the social media uh, by the information and updates. So ginagamit na rin ng social media para mag maging updated tayo sa news global, sa news sa specific area mo, sa municipalities mo, and also pati yung mga uh, news uh, TV shows, di ba? Meron na rin silang online. Next is uh, Nobel Cause, wherein to promote yung mga social welfare activities, mga raising, fundraisings for donations, and also awareness. Ito nga, napakaraming mga awareness na nakikita natin like mga uh, cyber security awareness, on, awareness on data privacy, awareness on mga 
child exploitation, and napakarami pang mga nakukuha nating informations about that. So, of course, we can help the government to fight crime kasi they, uh, they, we can actually report. So, nasusumbong na natin and help the government na mahuli yung mga uh, cyber criminals na to. And of course, build in help, uh, building communities. So, you can join online groups, empowering each other. So, so by objectives or by religions, you create, you join a group, di ba? So, lumalaki yung community mo, yung circle mo. Friends mo, lumalaki din. <clears throat> so, napakaraming benefits. But along with the benefits, of course, dahil napakaraming cyber criminals na nagkalat, there are also dangers of social media wherein yung mga anak natin, especially our teenagers, are the... Uh, large user of social media, so we should be aware of these dangers. Kasi baka meron na pala silang nakaka-interact or they face online uh, mga cyber criminals or perpetrators. So first is cyberbullying. This is the technology used to harass, threaten, embarrass, or target a person. So, so uh, this can be uh, direct and indirect. Mga online threats na yan, yung mga mean and aggressive or rude text, tweets, posts, messages. So, part yan ng mga cyberbullying. Uh, minsan may mga ine-edit pang photos and then uh, inakalat nila online para lang mabuli yung isang uh, victim. So, pero minsan they do it directly, uh, of course in the presence of targeted youth, so direct sa isang tao. Or indirect naman, uh, they do it or co they not communicated it's a target youth. They are just spreading rumors, mga Photoshop images nga, sinishare, pinapasa-pasa. So, uh, this is uh, forms of cyberbullying also. And we all know that cyberbullying is a serious uh, issue, lalo na sa mga kabataan na yun. And yung mga cyberbullies na yan, hindi nila alam kung anong effect nito sa mga love victim. Sometimes, uh, lalo na kung hindi, uh, walang mapagsabihan yung victim, hindi siya makapag-open up sa mga parents niya, sa, friend, sa friends niya or sa family niya, they, becoming, they become depressed and seriously, they commit suicide kapag hindi na nila matake yung uh, effect ng cyberbullying sa kanila. So, that's why parents and guardians, we should monitor, we should be friends sa mga kids natin sa mga social media accounts kasi baka meron ng cyberbullying na nangyayari sa mga anak natin. Next is catfishing, wherein a person can pretend someone uh, by stealing a uh, profile picture, kikreate sila ng fake one and then makikipag-friends or gagamitin yung manloko, di ba? May mga gumagamit yan. Uh, kinuha yung personal information mo and yung photos mo. Then, uh, ginamit nila para mang scam. Ginamit nila para mang cyberbully. Ginamit nila kung saan-saan hindi maganda. Next is scam. So, during uh, COVID times, napakadaming scammers na lumabas. After business transactions, di ba? Biglang nawawala. Biglang block ka na or hindi na nagre-reply or nagde-deactivate pa ng account. So, napakaraming scammers. So, baka ang kids natin, lalo na may mga allowance sila, baka they do some transactions, yung pala na may scam lang sila. So, let's guide our kids. Next is pornography. So, a lot of porn videos, images, other materials are accessible in the internet, di ba? Minsan, peer-to-peer -peer sharing pa nga yan eh. So, ang nakakatakot kung yung young ones natin, siguro 5 years old, yung mga elementary, may makita silang mga pornographic materials, di ba? So, nag expose sila sa ganong klaseng uh, content, which is hindi maganda. Next is sexting, is sending nude or semi-nude images as well as sexually explicit text messages using the phone or social media. So, about 12% of the youth ages 10 to 19 years of age have sent a sexual photo to someone else kakilala nila or hindi nila kakilala. ba? Bakit mag-send ng mga ganong klaseng uh, photos yung mga anak natin? 
that's why we really need to equip we we really need na uh, tulungan natin yung mga kids natin ipaintindi sa kanila yung mga dangers ng social media dangers ng internet so and of course remember di ba may forever sa internet so lahat ng isesend natin dinilet mo nga sa iyo pero sa pinag-sharean mo senior na niya ng senior so nagkakaroon ng maraming duplications or copies ng sinend mong photos so we should uh, really monitor our children next is online abuse o online sexual exploitation so baka yung iba sa atin hindi aware na may gantong klasing a uh, mga cyber perpetrators or offenders na naghahanap ng victims so If you watch yung magpakailan man yung regarding dun sa uh, nakachat niya which is uh, nagpanggap na kay age niya so nahulog yun uh, dun na siya nag-open up uh, dun siya nag-open up ng problems ng seek ng help so nung nakapag-meet up siya it's actually an adult pala and then try uh, and in the long run kapag nakuha na lang yung loob ng anak mo uh, gagawin na niya yung talagang intentions niya. We're into do a sexual ex, uh, to exploit your children. So, uh, minsan, uh, naghahanap lang sila ng victims. So, if the children is unsupervised or alam ng, uh, or minsan, yung mga, hindi tayo, hindi, parents, hindi tayo, hindi natin aware kung ano yung mga, sino yung mga nakakausap ng anak natin. Kaya kailangan mahalaga yung uh, communication. So, we are aware kung sino yung mga nakakausap. Baka mamaya isa na palang perpetrator siya. Bibiktimahin na yung anak mo, di ba? Kumahanap lang siya ng timing. Kaya napaka-importante na nandyan tayo, nag-guide tayo ng anak natin. Nandyan tayo sa tabi niya, minomonitor natin siya. Or, uh, during lockdown, nag-double globally yung numbers of a uh, online uh, child abuse o yung uh, it minsan it involves babies 12 years old and below kaya nakakatakot na yung mga anak na yung iba mga magulang ang sila mismo yung nag uh, hihikayat or sila mismo yung naguutos sa anak nila na uh, maging victim or pumayag na maging uh, pumayag dun sa mga online sexual acts. Kasi ang sabi nila, hindi naman daw na-harm yung kids. Kasi online lang, walang nangyayari. Tapos kumikita pa sila. Hindi nila alam yung uh, side effect nun, uh, psychologically uh, effect nun sa mga victims. So, parenting our digital kids, it's not easy. Super challenging. As in, napakarami kong I myself, napakarami kong uh, approaches or strat strategies na ginawa sa daughter ko para lang uh, mabawasan na mabawasan. And until now, I'm happy na hindi na siya addicted sa gadgets niya. Kasi uh, kaya na niyang i-discipline sarili niya. Uh, actually, she is five years old pero napakarami kong challenges na nanasan para lang i-parent siya. And kaya naiintindihan ko, I'm relate, uh, nakaka-relate ako sa mga parents na nahihirapan sa digital parenting. But digital parenting, huwag tayong susuko kasi it's all about the small efforts and the big efforts. And of course, the patience from us parents kasi it helps in building uh, a resilient kids, a healthy relationship with our children. So, As early as possible, hanggat kaya pa, hanggat bata pa yan, control na natin sila and i-guide na natin sila on the proper and enough use of gadgets. Gawin na po natin yan hanggat kaya pa natin. So, hindi madali and hindi rin tayo magsasuccess as digital parent kung walang teamwork sa family. Kasi digital parenting, it involves both parents, hindi lang si mami yung disciplinarian, kailangan pati si daddy, agreed kayo sa objective nyo na uh, imomonitor nyo yung screen time niya, uh, ililimit nyo yung screen time na anak mo, and mas madali na pag uh, may teamwork, di ba? Of, of course, you can include the uh, whole family, 
Kasi this is not a journey. Hindi po ins uh, this is a journey. Hindi instant na uh, sinabihan mo lang kids mo or nag uh, list down ka lang ng house rules automatic or magic na hindi na hahanapin ng kids mo yung gadgets. So it's a long journey lalo na uh, technology or updating. So mas marami pa tayong dapat alamin, mas marami pa tayong dapat matutunan, mas marami rin tayong dapat uh, ituro sa mga anak natin. So, sa atin lagi nag-uumpis, ha? So, here's naman, uh, the DICT Cyber Security Bureau, uh, dun sa DICT page namin, we release an advisory on the ligtas na paggamit ng Google Classroom para sa online learning. So, mas... Uh, So, you can browse it doon sa aming uh, cybersecurity page. But, ang pinaka uh, iiwan ko dito is para maging secure tayo and yung mga kids natin uh, sa mga teachers, if you will uh, set a meeting or a video class schedule, always make sure po na naka-private. Huwag natin i-share ang meeting uh, details like yung uh, wag natin i-publicize yung meeting ID, wag natin i-publicize yung password, wag natin i-share kung kanina-kanina yung mga details ng classroom natin. We should secure the online classroom so that we can secure yung mga students natin and mga kids natin. So it is a uh, responsibility ng teachers, responsibility ng students and ng parents para magkaroon ng isang ligtas na online learning platform. So, secure the online classroom by setting class code, password, meeting ID, or class link. Uh, instead of uh, sending it on social media, uh, send it by email, invite, to avoid unwanted guests. So, hindi invited, uh, napi-filter natin, di ba? And also, by that, uh, during the discussions or the online class, Please have an attendance check. Kung lahat ng nag-join uh, or pumapasok is registered or listed kasi baka may mga unwanted guests na makikigulo or magdi-distract ng inyong uh, klase. So, also sa uh, sa features, lagi nating i-on yung uh, ask to join para hindi uh, nafi-filter natin lahat ng papasok. And of course, uh, uh, sa amin, uh, for all the meetings, we use the naming standards. So, by that, mas madaling mag-attendance checks. Example is uh, section, underscore, uh, last name, then first name. So, by that, si teacher, mas madali niyang ma-attendance check from time to time. And of course, uh, off natin yung mga hindi dapat i-on. Uh, like the mic, the uh, camera, to avoid any distractions. So, uh, you can browse these uh, tips and advisory sa aming page. Or I can share my presentations for the references and information. So, yun lang po. Just uh, please connect with us for uh, any uh, advisory updates or mga cybersecurity tips or hygiene uh, through our F, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. So, iwan ko lang is your cell phone has already replaced your watch, camera, and calendar, di ba? And alarm clock. Nasa iisang gadgets lang. Nandiyan na lahat ng kailangan natin. But, please don't replace it with your family. Family pa rin ang kailangan at ang pinaka-importante sa lahat so, that's it. Hope may mga natutunan po kayo sa akin. So, thank you again for the time. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Diana, for uh, sharing with us uh, your discussion about this uh, parenting in digital age. Uh, yung inyo pong uh, mga binahagi no, habang pinapakinggan namin, these are uh, the practical things talaga na nangyayari, uh, especially nowadays, no, that uh, uh, 
I'm supposed to say the kids, no? Kasi uh, yung, yung, yung range ng ages na ibinahagi nyo rin kanina from the preschoolers to elementary to to high school and even college. Uh, Kung baga, no? In, in parenting talaga, it's, it's really challenging. Lalo na kapag yung range ng, ng mga anak ng ating mga magulang ay, ay iba-iba. Kaya nga, we really appreciate our parents. Uh, sa kanilang uh, ginagawa hindi madali no yung yung kanilang yung kanilang ano ba ba? I, I won't say trabaho pero yung kanilang uh, stand no as as a parent uh, if you don't mind no ma'am Diana you are a mom of how many kids uh, a five daughter and a one year old kid seryoso po yes <laughs> wow all right so that's ano ah uh, Kumbaga, that's why you can relate to them no, sa, sa mga magulang because you really are experiencing kung ano ba yung kinakaharap ng mga magulang uh, natin ngayon. Uh, may mga ilan lamang pong questions dito na uh, pumasok sa ating um, uh, chat box. And of course, sa ating pong mga nanay, mga tatay, mga magulangin na nakikinig at nanonood po uh, sa ating webinar. If you have questions pa po, uh, nag-send po dyan ng link. Ang tanong niyo pong gagawin ay click yan at uh, mag-send po kayo ng questions if you have uh, things to ask uh, either or clarifications. Uh, one question that we've got is Aha, during these online classes, since halos 24-7 na sila nakaharap sa mga laptop nila or phones, how do we limit it po when they are bombarded with tasks and they use it to cope during hard time uh, na may pandemic? Uh, just to to quote no what you have just said earlier ma'am Diana kasi meron pa yung pinakita doon na na span of time no span of time so so this question is more on paano nga ba uh, since online classes I believe the DepEd and also school meron silang also a uh, schedule so uh, DepEd also po uh uh Yung DepEd, meron din silang uh, screen time or I mean online class schedule. So, parang nalilimit din yung mga screen time ng mga kids. So, if bombarded na masyado yung kids natin, so, uh, since medyo bago tayo, bago sa atin nato, so I recommend na you can talk to your kids. So, kung nahihirapan na siya, so, pwede rin nating uh, Pwede rin natin kausapin yung mga teachers uh, on the circumstances na kinakaharap ng mga kids natin. Kasi sobrang, uh, we're very new on it, uh, di ba? So lahat tayo uh, kailangan makakope, lahat tayo nag adjust pa lang naman. So if hindi na kaya ng kids natin, doon papasok again yung responsibility ng parents na i-guide yung mga kids natin. And of course, to encourage our kids. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga sinasabi natin no, that uh, it's really a partnership. It's, sabi nga, we, we are working hand in hand. Uh, the academe, uh, the parents, and of course the initiative of uh, the, the government agency like yours, the, the DICT. Uh, one more, ma'am. Um, a good thing no, that you are really inclined into this uh, technology, into this communication and information thing. Ma'am, just to ask, no, uh, what are your tips for those naman na hindi pa ganon ka digitally inclined? Kumbaga, it's, it's easier said than done na, oh, ararin lang po natin, kaya po natin yan. yan. This, these words are easy said. Uh, but what are the application, ma'am? Your tips, ma'am? For dun sa mga, yes, uh, lalo na yung mga mas elder na parents, di ba? Mm -hmm. Sila yung mas magiging uh, challenge dito eh, kasi sila yung parang nangangapa pa sa devices, di ba? So actually, on online, napakaraming tips or uh, tutorials like how we use this or pa ano ba yung use neto, paano natin. And of course, basic lang. Huwag nating pilitin na alam natin lahat. So let's start with our devices. So let's mm -hmm. explore our devices. Sa devices pa lang natin, it will really help, lalo na yung mga smartphones. Napakarami ngayong uh, 
Uh, features sa smartphones, if you explore Android mapa iPhones, may mga screen time dyan, which can help uh, the parents kung medyo nangangapapa tayo. And of course, kaya nandyan yung uh, anak natin, yung partnership natin or teamwork with our kids. Kaya nga, di ba, dapat may communications. So kung medyo nahihirapan tayo, if we have an open of communication with our children, so our children, pwede nila tayong turuan. Walang masama kung tuturuan tayo ng kids natin. Sabi nga, in this generation, kids are leading adults, di ba? So, mm -hmm. try to ask your kids or children kung paano gamitin, di ba? So, para uh, mas malaman natin kung medyo nahihirapan talaga tayo. Mm -hmm. So, communication din, mama, no? And, uh, kumbaga, learning from the young and learning from the from the old. Parang ganyan. It's it's like an uh, interchange of learning. Uh, Sir Ernesto, just um, address us. We are implementing online classes. We follow the said screen time for certain age groups as recommended by the WHO and the DEP and also issued a memorandum parallel to this. Okay, so thank you for that, Sir Ernesto. Again, as I said earlier, this is um, uh, a work uh, and we, we are working uh, hand in hand for this. One more, ma'am. Um, paano po ista? The word here is stop or prevent uh, na magamit ang uh, social media sa mga minors kasi maraming predator, uh, predator sa mga bata when left unattended. Actually, if na if meron ng accounts yung mga uh, mga bata or yung mas young uh, younger kids natin. Actually, hindi naman recommended talaga, di ba, na they have social media accounts. But, uh, nangyayari, dinadaya nila yung age, so nakaka-create sila ng accounts. So, kung hindi na natin maiwasan yun, uh, let's monitor yung activities ng mga kids natin. Kasi hindi natin sila may stop Sabi ko nga, uh, uh, if we are uh, friends ng mga anak natin sa social media, by that, we can monitor your activities. We can monitor if someone is attacking your kids, di ba? And of course, communication with your kids na baka may mga someone sila na ina-add friend na hindi nila kakilala or may mga uh, exchanges of uh, messages na sila na hindi na tama, di ba? So, and of course, we should, uh, kung ano yung mga natututunan ng parents, we should, uh, Ituro din natin sa mga anak natin na may gan uh, to for them to be aware na may mga gantong klasing uh, perpetrators, may mga gantong cyber offenders. Kasi minsan yung mga anak natin, they just use uh, technology without uh, being aware sa mga dangers, di ba? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, another one, ma'am, learning from your good office, ilang taon po ba ang recommended or ideal na magkaroon ng social media account ang isang bata? I will not recommend uh, on behalf of the my uh, office, but I will recommend on, on my uh, personal uh, opinion. For me, uh, mga... Uh, siguro, for me, 15 years old and above... Or pwede namang mga 13 years old, but again, supervised. But uh, for me kasi yung mga teenagers, they also need yung social media, lalo na sa schools, sa mga friends. But I recommend yun nga, 15 and above. Kasi on that uh, age, mas, uh, mas maraming mas aware na sila, mas uh, may discipline na sila sa kanilang uh, social media use, di ba? mas magiging uh, yung knowledge nila on the disadvantages and advantages, on the benefits, on the risks, mas malaki yung uh, uh, mas malaki yung knowledge nila, I think, dun sa mga mas younger. And for me again, as much as yung age nila na dapat naglalaro pa sila uh, physically ng mga toys, so naglalaro pa sila outside, as much as possible, dapat wala silang social media para mas uh, na-develop na, na yung socialization nila with, uh, the, with other 
uh, with other kids, other children, personally, hindi uh, online lang. Alright, so um, I think, uh, alright, um, I have one more here. What does uh, screen time really means? Do we need to take a relax our eyes or we have to stop? Screen time, screen time. The screen time, yung iba, uh, other parents, uh, they just monitor the screen time of their kids uh, using yung mga parental controls. Meron siyang Google Family app wherein they can actually see or monitor kung ano yung mga activities ng kids nila on how much uh, time their kids spent on their uh, gadgets. And of, uh, hindi naman totally kailangan 24 by 7, nakabantay tayo, di ba? Why kailangan nga natin ituro sa mga anak natin, uh, i-disseminate natin yung mga informations about the risk, about the dangers, uh, about the effects sa mga kids natin. So by, uh, and also the uh, responsibility as a good digital citizens, kailangan din natin ituro sa mga kids natin. So by that, teaching them uh, those uh, things, uh, nasisiki, uh, nagiging um, nababawasan yung concern natin or yung kaba natin na maput into danger yung kids natin. So uh, nagiging uh, resilient yung mga kids natin or children natin on their own. So hindi naman totally 24 by 7 kasi parents napakarami niyang our responsibilities, di ba? Mapa work, mapa bahay, mapa kids, di ba? So sobrang uh, challenging, sobrang uh, burden minsan nga sa mga uh, parents yung uh, i-monitor ang mga kids nila. Alright, thank you for that, Ma'am Diana. Just uh, one last question. Uh, but this is more of suggestion. Pwede po ba i-regulate ng GICT or NTC ang mga websites para sure na hindi na ito ma-access ng mga bata. Actually, I believe we have the uh, safer app uh, wherein uh, they plan to uh, collaborate with certain uh, with certain uh, internet providers para ma-block or ma-restrict yung mga uh, Asian internet but I uh, I don't know yet the status kung ano na yung status ng policy. They create they crafting policy on that para ma restrict na yung mga ganong classing websites like mga pornographic websites. All right, this was a good answer, ma'am. Uh, sorry, but we have uh, kumbaga isa pang tanong ano from Sir Ernesto. Uh, how can parents balance out the friend and follow? But don't talk principle to the privacy of their children, especially teenagers. Ayan nga, uh, we follow like we are friends. So how we uh, how we uh, follow or be in um, paano tayo maging updated sa mga online friends natin. Same with our kids. We'll just check kung ano yung mga pinupost nila, na pictures, na uh, mga statuses, yung mga uh, kung sino yung mga friends na nagla-like sa mga ano nila, sa uh, posts, certain uh, pictures. Uh, ganun lang. Kasi yung communication part naman, kailangan mangyari yan uh, personally sa loob ng bahay. So you, you don't need to spy on your kids. You just... Uh, uh, be updated. All right. Thank you for that, uh, Ma'am Dayan. Uh, and of course, uh, thank you, Sir Ernesto, for active participation kasi uh, we, we see your uh, your questions uh, here. Maraming maraming salamat po again, Ma'am Dayan. I'll go direct uh, to the presentation of Certificate of Appreciation to you, Ma'am. Let me just read the citation. On behalf of MSEUF College of Computing and Multimedia Studies, I would like to present this certificate of appreciation to Ms. Diana Jean P. Faustino for her invaluable and exemplary service rendered as guest speaker during the webinar on digital parenting conducted by the Department of Information Communications Technology in partnership with the Manuel S. Inverga University Foundation, Lucena City, via Google Meet.
given the 7th day of December 2020, signed by Rodrigo C. Belleza, Jr., Dean of the College of Computing and Multimedia Studies. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Diane. All right, thank you so much, Ma'am. And for our closing remarks, we have a director of the Community Relations Department of Manuel S. Inverga University Foundation, Professor Milagrosa A. Lawas. Ma'am? Thank you, Ms. Gail. Congratulations to the College of Computing and Multimedia Studies, to the Dean of CCMS, Dean Ogi, and to our CES coordinator, Ma'am Donna. Thank you very much. And especially, syempre po, sa ating speaker, who really rendered her time and sharing with us a very interesting topic on digital parenting. So let me share my thought about this since uh, what caught my attention is about the common dangers on digital, on the use of social media. Parang ang isa nakita ko as a parent is about uh, yung pag-online, yung order, pag-order online ng ating mga anak <laughs> o yung hindi natin makokontrol na pag-order. Pag so, it seems isa yun sa dapat din na maging um, concern din ng mga parents if they let their children have their own account and use uh, gadgets na walang control ang mga magulang. And as educator, on the other hand, let me share this. Uh, this is actually for our children around the world who are deprived of using the social media even if they really want to since they are into online classes on also. So coming from the UNICEF, uh, one in four children is affected by, by the problems uh, with regards to the pandemic, uh, conflict, and natural disasters. And all around the world, there are 75 million children and young adults or young children who are um, actually deprived of this kind of uh, remote and online learning. And so uh, from UNICEF, it is very much important that uh, we should also include our children to be part of this kind, of, uh, to have access to education. And being part of the community, we also would like to, siyempre, maging bahagi din ito, ng tinatawag natin digital citizenship education. And this kind of digital citizenship education should be a community effort. So katulad din po na nasabi ni Ma'am Diana na there should be not only the control of the parents but there should always be the support by the parents to their children as well as teachers to their students. So ang magiging impact po kasi nito is uh, it will be more powerful when students have multiple trusted adults whom they could uh, discuss issues with and when they are he hearing the same messages reinforced mula sa bahay at saka sa school, I think uh, na-empower din natin yung ating mga anak at yung ating mga isidyante. And for that, thank you very much po on behalf of the university's uh, management from the president, from Nyla Leverisa, to our vice president for external relations, uh, Sir Celso Habalia. Thank you very much po sa lahat ng umaten, sa mga magula at mga residente, sa faculty po ng CCMS, and the Dean, thank you very much. So, I hope that everyone will be safe and sane during this pandemic. Thank you po. Thank you, ma'am. And it's great to hear from you, ma'am, because si, si Ma'am Lawas is both a mom and a ma'am. Yeah. So, really thank relevant you. for this topic. Thank you so much, Ma'am Milagrosa A. Lawas, Director of the Community Relations Department. And uh, highlighting her word kanina, no, that uh, this is a... Uh, a community extension service project of the College of Computing and Multimedia Studies. Let's now move to the guidelines and uh, reminders. But of course, before that, uh, bago tayo matapos, no, atin munang pasasalamatan ang team. Uh, because of them, this webinar is made possible. Maraming maraming salamat po sa DICT Quezon Provincial office and of course uh headed by uh engineer uh and mario antonio ayaay the dict kazan provincial head uh dict lc2 technical operation 
uh, Division Head. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po, GICT Quezon Provincial Office. Of course, uh, in partnership with the MSEUF Manuel S. Inverga University Foundation, College of uh, Computing and Multimedia Studies. Siyempre po, maraming maraming salamat sa mga magulang na nakiisa sa ating webinar. Uh, ito po ay uh, mas magiging posible pa sa, sa inyong tulong. No? As, as we always say, we are working hand in hand for, uh, uh, for the safety rent ng mga estudyante, ng inyong pong mga anak, especially in these times uh, that we are maximizing the online world. Guidelines and reminders. Certificates will be provided to those who have attended the full duration of webinar. Answer the post-evaluation form. Makikita po natin ito sa ating chat box dito sa ating Google Meet. At sa YouTube naman po, ito po ay nakalagay sa ating description. Input valid and active email address when filling out the post-evaluation form. And cut-off time is tomorrow at 4 PM. Pero syempre, agari na po natin para hindi natin malimutan. And of course, uh, para mabalikan natin yung ating mga learnings and the things that we have got uh, from our speaker earlier, ito po ay muli ninyong mapapanood. Just go to the CyberSec LC2 YouTube channel. And, all right, this is our uh, post-evaluation link. And of course, don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Inverga U at DICT Gov PH at DICT.LC2 at DICT.Kezon and at CyberSec.LC2. And we will end with this word from Newton V. And I quote, as the world is increasingly interconnected, everyone shares the responsibility of securing cyberspace. Again, this is a shared responsibility. Maraming, maraming salamat pong muli. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, it's a privilege to have you this afternoon for this webinar. Mabuhay po tayong lahat.